Hey guys, welcome to episode number 17 of the Derby Red Life. And to start off this episode, we're currently joint on points with Chelsea. We have got the game in hand though against in the bottom three team, uh, Forest, their second bottom. And um, yeah, with a win against them, we should go back into first position, hopefully. We did get uh, knocked out of the FA Cup in the last episode, of course, um, but we are through to the quarterfinals, I think, of the um, Champions League. So let me just quickly show you that because we have got Manchester United, the other teams in the Cup. There's actually some interesting ones. We've got Juventus and Atletico Madrid. They're normally there. Real Madrid and Barcelona. They're normally there. And then there's Bayer Leverkusen, who beat Arsenal. And there's Villarreal, who beat Chelsea. So I wouldn't mind one of those two. Um, and then maybe like a Barcelona or Real Madrid in the final. That'd be kind of cool. So, yeah, let's go into this episode. We've got the game against Forest to kick it off. We'll probably go up to and maybe including the Manchester United game. Depending on how many goals are in each game, basically. That just dictates how the long the episodes will be. We've got Arsenal, Burnley, Newcastle and uh, Man United in the quarters. So we've got Oxley chamberlain back from injury now. So that's really important time as uh, Arsenal are just about to come up. Yeah, we really lacked out wide, I think, during that period. And maybe if we had Ox in that game um, against Chelsea, I think we could have potentially gone through to the next round of the FA Cup. But nevertheless, Dolberg's out to the end of the season. And I think Adams should be back soon enough. Um, but it's, it's one of them where we keep getting broken toes and they're out for like a couple of months. And those those games are massive when you miss them. Here's the Forest team for today's game. Then Smith and Gold, Darroqua, Jack Hobbs, Worrell, Pinto, and uh, Gary Gardner and Brid Cut. Osborne, Zach Clough, and um, Skabiski, I think that is. And then uh, Jack Cummins up front. Pretty decent team. It's, it's not very different to the team that they start with, so I'm kind of surprised that they got promoted. Obviously, these players have actually got quite decent potential, such as Worrell, Ben Osborne, Zach Clough. They've all got like 80-plus potential, so probably quite a decent team, but we, we should be easily enough beating them and uh, getting back to top position. Fox with the ball. I've stuck him on the left-hand side, but can he get the shot off? He can. It's been saved into Tammy. Now with the header and into the back of the net. We have found the breakthrough in the 70th minute, only 20 minutes to go and um, I must say when it, when it is a derby game, obviously form kind of goes out the window, it doesn't really matter where you are on the table and um, we have eventually found the back of the net, it's, it's been quite a difficult game to break through and uh, Tammy's got his sixth goal of the season. Forrest on the attack here, it's gone through the middle with the shot off the post and into the back of the net, really poor defending from me there and there's only a minute left in the game, <laughs> it's really unfortunate. And we probably will be dropping points, but we will be still going top. We are joint on points. It would be nice if we could win the game. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. I don't know if that was actually Mark Warburton there. I don't know if they actually had him scanned into the game. Obviously, when I started this career mode, he was the manager. Um, but it's really annoying because I would like a win in this game. But I'm not too fussed because before... Um, uh, it kind of goes out the window form when you are in a derby. And there we go, full time against Forest. It is one all in the end. Elite equaliser from, I think, who was it? Joe Warrell, the centre back. Of course, he's up front for some reason. And uh, he's got the late goal. Not a single shot on target, but they've still managed to nick a point. Just got a training injury. Let's see who it is. It is going to be Moses Simon for two months with a uh, collateral ligament damage. It's just really annoying. It's like, I've not had injuries throughout any of the last four seasons and they've just literally piled up in the last um, couple of episodes really poorly and it's all it's all in the attacking areas I wouldn't mind a defender but it is one of our better players in Moses Simon so I'm gonna probably got one or two things I could do in this situation into the next game then against Arsenal they are currently top of the table we have got a game in hand and a point will put us top I think on goal difference um, maybe not maybe they'll, they'll be still top so we do need to win this game if we are going to go back to top. We have dropped points in the last game against Forest, of course. And uh, Man United only three points behind us. We don't want to miss out on Champions League football. So really important that we get the win in this game. I think I'll give them their blue kit. And um, it's nice that we're at home. But because the Forest game was only like a couple of days ago, fitness isn't amazing. But I think it's just about acceptable. But as you can see, we've literally got our three best attackers in. Dolberg, Simon and Adams all injured now for the next month and a half pretty much um, and then Adams will be back and then I think Moses Simon so definitely don't want to pick up any more injuries so I'm gonna I might be tempted to go Lawrence from the start because Vigil wasn't too impressive in the last game just just because of fitness I think I just don't want to make any more injuries and uh, mess us up here's the Arsenal team then for today's game they've got Antonio Lopez in goal Pereira 
Rob Holding, uh, Vestergaard, the Dane, and then uh, Javi Garcia from uh, Javi Martinez, sorry, from um, Bayern Munich, the centre back. Then they got Barreca, the uh, Italian left back, who's really good indeed. He'll probably be about 83 rated by now. Then Don Crim Fabinho in the middle, Pulisic, Lacazette, and Alexi Sanchez. Now, if I obviously started a career mode now, Sanchez would, wouldn't be there. But it's a very different team, I must say. Very, very good uh, career mode team Arsenal have built there. And um, yeah, we've, we've put Lawrence in the middle just to try something else, a little bit more creativity, hopefully, um, than Vidra. And uh, hopefully, we can get three points and get us back to top. Lacazette slips it through for Pulisic. He's got the pace to go through on goal. Pulled it across to Lacazette, and it's it's really poor from the Frenchman. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens to him in real life, because obviously he is injured until the end. Well, I think a good couple of months now. And um, obviously bringing in Aubameyang, is he going to still be at the club? Tammy's with the ball though, with the shot saved by Lopez. Now Ox gets in to the back post with Tammy, and it's a great header, and it is a great goal. Oxay Chamberlain providing the assist against his former club, 20th minute. Good to get an early goal. Like it took us 70 minutes against Forest, and um, we've already got the goal against Arsenal. But you can say about Arsenal, of course, not too good at defending. But it was a great header, and uh, the keeper's not going to stop that. Two minutes to go in this game, then Arsenal on the attack. Definitely don't want to concede a late goal again. It's gone into the box. A great delivery. Keeper deals with it though. Going to clear it, and that is full time. Fine, fine margins that game was. Literally one nil in it, and um, Antonio Lopez did help out Arsenal quite a bit. They didn't really create too much Arsenal. I must say that they weren't too good at either end of the pitch. Um, keeper probably kept them in the game. And uh, we've managed to get the three points and go back to top. Into the next one then against Burnley. Bit of an interesting team, Burnley. They are just above the relegation zone. And um, they, they're a bit of a bogey team. Sometimes I'm really good against Burnley. And then other times I really do struggle. So it is a way at Turf Moor as well. If we do get anything from the game, we go top of the table. It's as simple as that. Hopefully it's a win. We do need to get the three points, of course. And uh, after this game, we've got Newcastle. Then the Champions League game. It's kind of annoying how you don't know if that's home or away. And then you don't know what that is. So I'm hoping in a way we start with the away game. Um, get a point. Like, keep it level. And then uh, win at home. Here we are then at Turf Moor against Burnley. They do normally have Keefton Belt in their team. We did obviously sell him to them. He's not in the lineup today. But looking at their team, they've got... Uh, don't know who that goalkeeper is. Uh, Piszczek, who's probably about 34, 35 now. Tarkovsky, um, Baumgartel and Dalber. Soriano, Meyer and um, Cork and Cartabia. Then Sensi and Bas Dost up front. Chance here for Burnley. With the shot in into the top left-hand corner. I think it is Sensi with the goal to open it up in the first uh, 28 minutes of the game here. Not 100% sure. I've heard his name somewhere, but uh, not 100% sure what kind of quality, what kind of footed he is like for example if I'm playing against David Silva I know stick him on his right foot because he's not that good on it um, but Sensi not a clue about him and um, yeah he's managed to find that top left hand corner and get them into the lead all over the top here for Danny Ings against his former club can he find the back of the net yes he can it's written in the stars and uh, he's scored against his former club I don't think I would really celebrate but completely forgot what button to press and um, it's a great ball over the top from in fairness he's just come off the bench and uh, tucks it in that top left hand corner and gets us back level I wouldn't mind a point because they are really tough and it is his first goal this season in the Premier League for Danny Ings and um, maybe we can get a winner there we go full time against Burnley another draw against a team that we should really be beating towards the end of uh, the bottom of the table but their keeper was quite decent sentency was difficult to deal with at times but a point's a point at the end of the day. We were away at Burnley and we didn't really create too much. We are we are lacking in those attacking areas. A bit of pace. So we do go back to the top of the Premier League. But we have got another game away at St. James's Park next against Newcastle. Another kind of bogey team. I don't know whereabouts they are on the table. So let's have a quick look. They're towards the bottom as well. Only, well, seven points off. But still in that danger area. They do need to get the points, of course, to stay in the league. We've only lost three games this year. You can look at it that way. We've we've really done well to be unbeaten. And we just need to turn some of these draws into wins. I seem to do better against the bigger teams. That's that's the annoying thing. I'm trying to find our last loss that we did pick up. So our last loss was against Watford in uh, the start of November. 4-0 loss. A massive loss. And then we've been unbeaten ever since then. We've picked up quite a few draws and a few wins here and there. And um, we found ourselves top of the table. So definitely need to get the win in this game. Um, against Newcastle, away at St James's Park. 
then hopefully get a result at Man United. We'll have to wait and see though. Up against Newcastle then at St James's Park, looking at their team, they've gone for a 4-4-1-1 with uh, Tim Krull and Goal, who should be at Brighton, but nevertheless they've got Najar, Anton Lejeune and Aben Yor at left back. Not usually his position, then Saar, um, Hayden, Barrios and Blas on the right. Jose Perez and then uh, up front they have got Asmoon, the uh, Russian. We've had to play Danny Ings in the uh, attacking midfield position because we literally have no attackers now. We, we, we've got really poor fitness if I just show you the bench quickly. I just I don't want us to get any more injuries so I don't have to play players such as Ox on like half fitness and uh, Vidra on half fitness. And that's good support as they build With the shot. Attack. And it's in the back of the net, Danny Ings. I really didn't expect that to go in the back of the net but it is... The goal to break the deadlock, and that should be a second goal this uh, season. Back to get back back to back games for Danny Ings to get the goal, and um, kind of kind of deserved in a way because we we have been quite the dominant team in this first half, and it's a, it's a decent strike. He is at the camp position at the moment, um, but what I'll probably end up doing is bringing on Thorn and taking off Tammy because got the Man United game in like two days. There we are, full time against Newcastle is another three points. Only a 1-0 win though, so not exactly the most thrilling game in the world. But as you can see, that's that's literally everything there. Two saves for Krull, one save for our keeper and the goal. Literally everything happened in the first half. Here we are then against Man United, away in the Champions Cup. I'm kind of happy because fitness isn't too impressive. So if we can get a draw in this game, bring it back home and get the win and get through to the semis, that'll be ideal. But we'll have to wait and see, of course against Manchester United we are going to be using our black kit because we haven't actually used it in a while um, and it's in the rain which isn't amazing but we're going to have to deal with it of course I'm probably going to have to do that again like fitness wise we're just not too good at the moment which is a bit of a shame um, I may even put Thorn in just to keep it a bit more tight in the midfield here we are then at Old Trafford against Manchester United in the Champions Cup. You can't get much bigger than this. And uh, they aren't playing the most strongest team in the world. They've got uh, James Wilson up front. But maybe they've sold, like, Lukaku or something. And then the game's just literally only got James Wilson. But uh, nevertheless, they've got Antino Martial, Pogba, Mkhitaryan, Fellaini, Matic, Suare, and uh, Lindelof, Smalling, Aguirre, and uh, David De Gea in goal. Obviously, players such as, like, Pogba and De Gea are going to be, like, 92 rated by now. Um, but not the strongest defence in the world, I must say, and not the best striker in the world in James Wilson, coming against his former club. Pogba with the ball, it's gone into the box. Don't know what my keeper's doing. What the hell is... And you wonder why they don't play this game sometimes. <laughs> like, I, I pointed that way, so up, up the pitch that way, and pressed X to completely head it clear. For some reason, he headed it back to my keeper, and then at that point, my keeper thought, oh, I can't pick that up for some like I'm amazed I don't know what like why did my keeper just not because it was a header so you can catch those you know keeper but for some reason he didn't bother simple ball into the box oh no it's a box why did he kick it why did he kick it that way oh my god this game it does trigger me sometimes but uh not the start we were looking for against my United that's for sure into Vidri's throw on goal can he get past Lindelof though been taken out in the box and it's a penalty great opportunity to get back into it will there be a red card as well to follow it's just a yellow could have done with him being sent off because he's actually been quite decent this game and straight away he's come off the uh, bench Lawrence sticks it through for Vidra and uh, gets the penalty so we'll take it with whoever's got the best penalty stats just to give us the best opportunity to score luckily I've got the arrow as well and it's in the back of the net really Nice penalty, De Gea stands still, and um, we're back level, and it is an away goal as well, that's that's quite important to know. I don't know if it works the same as it does in real life, it should, in theory, but you never know with the eight. this is sixth goal in the Champions Cup, and um, as I said at the start of the game, I don't mind a draw and then win at home. And there we go, full time, I'm happy with that, I don't mind a draw, we've got the away goal that I wanted, and... Um, we really didn't have the strongest of teams, so I'm, I'm quite happy with that result. We didn't create too much, neither did United, and it's one all. So we have got Che Adams back for the next episode, so that's really good, because, well, we're having to play Sasu and Kamba right mid in the last game, so that just shows how lack of depth we've got. Um, yeah, I think maybe maybe play a weaker team against Bournemouth, then put all our eggs into that game against what we kind of have to to get through to the semis. 
Um, and then we got West Brom, Chelsea, then Huddersfield, Swansea, Stoke, and then the Premier League season's done. So we do kind of need to keep an eye on the Premier League as well. Currently, we are two points off the leaders, Chelsea, but with a game in hand, of course, um, with a win, it will put us back to top. So hopefully you guys did enjoy this episode. Leave a like if you did enjoy. Bit of a longer episode as I didn't upload in like a week. But uh, yeah, hopefully we can get either the Premier League or the Champions Cup. It's one or the other. Let me know in the comment section down below which you would prefer. And uh, yeah, see you soon. Bye.